whole portion of the Barnegat Township Board of Education <laughs> meeting for March. All right, uh, Ms. Cherney? Here. Mr. Hickey? Here. Mr. Aymonte? Ms. Ms. Levy? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Quelch? Here. Mr. Zawicki? Here. Ms. Tarnowski? Here. And Mr. O'Brien? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Okay. Uh, we'll go through the Committee of the Whole Agenda. First up is Finance PNG. Mr. Quelch? You ready? Sorry. I didn't get an agenda yet. It's all right. We can come back to it if you want. I'm fine. I'll, I'll grab it after. Thank you. Um, finance and buildings, grounds, and transportation met on March 17th. Uh, we started the meeting off the discussion of the HVAC upgrades at multiple schools. Um, the bids were received on March 16th, and we spoke about what we can do at this time and what we cannot do. Uh, Mr. Brennan explained that we are going to utilize reserves and proprietary funds to finance the balance that the CARES Act funding does not cover. Uh, while there are concerns regarding the resulting in the capital reserve balance, uh, Mr. Brennan explained the HVAC concerns outweighs the low balance in the capital reserve account. Uh, Mr. Brennan expected to deposit more into the capital reserve for the end of the fiscal year to build that account back up. Um, regarding finance, we also spoke about the tentative budget, which we presented on June 30th. Moving into the buildings and grounds, um, our ESEP solar project um, are completely installed, and we are awaiting a few components at the Donahue and Brackman School. Um, the entire project is complete. We should be fully functional by April 1st. Our staff is completely our staff is completing training on the new control upgrades we recently finished. The high school science labs are being finished. The TVs and the Brackman schools are being installed. Also, the sound system at the football field is completed and up and running. Um, in transportation, we discussed the cost and convenience associated with the possibility of using charter buses <coughs> in case we need help transporting students to their sports games. Uh, we also spoke about changing the bell schedules to accommodate transportation schedules. That's all I have to report out. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Quelch. Uh, Mr. Sawicki, please uh, give us an update on athletics. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before we get started on that, I received an email earlier today. I was wondering if we could get it on the agenda for tonight that we, a couple months ago, we put in the host of Garden State Wrestling Tournament and we received the winning bid for that. So we got to go ahead to host that. So if we could put that in the agenda tonight and go through with that so that could get going. Um, that, that was a big accomplishment for us. I know we were looking for that for a while. Uh, just to jump in really quick, Rob, it uh, did make the agenda that's digital. Oh, okay. Uh, after print. So that is on the agenda. Excellent. All right, thank you. Uh, we did meet on March 16th. Uh, we met on that Wednesday and we discussed filling a vacancy for the high school assistant track coach. And that's going to be Sean Foley. We also made, uh, you'll see on tonight's agenda for a couple motions for all, for a bunch of basketball. So girls high school basketball is looking to host a summer basketball league on Mondays throughout the summer from 627, six and to eight, 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 <coughs> two, sorry. Instead of traveling up to Point Pleasant like they did last year, we wanted to host our own. Also, the girls' high school basketball summer rec camp is every Tuesday from 628 until 89. The location for that is going to be in the Barnegat High School gym. Barnegat Elementary Summer League, grades 2 to 8, from July 5th to August 2nd. And the location for that is Barnegat High School, gyms 1 and 2 on Tuesdays only from 6 to 9 p.m. Also, Boys High School Basketball Fundraiser is having their first annual Barnegat Basketball Alumni Game on Wednesday, July 13th. Second annual Barnegat Bengals Summer Youth Camp is at the Barnegat High School. That's going to take place on June 28th to June 30th. Also looking for the eighth annual bat battle at Barnegat, which is the summer team camp at the high school. That's from July 18th to July 21st. 
Also, Albright is looking to put on a camp at our facilities from July 29th to the 31st, but Albright is currently waiting to go through approval on their end as well. And that'll be the end of my report. Any questions for athletics? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Swicky. Uh, next up is Mr. Hickey with the Education Committee updates. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Education Committee, we met on March 15th. Um, basically, we're going to be putting forward uh, seven motions this evening. I'll just kind of review some of the highlights from the meeting. Um, it started off uh, with Mr. Gunderson coming in and doing a pretty robust student services update. Um, part of that update, he was talking about um, us and putting in a new curriculum for the autism and MD program and also adding a new program that we're seeking approval from the county called Language Learning Disabilities. Um, so with the first part, the um, Autism and MD, uh, seven classes within the district will transition to the new unique learning system curriculum. ULS is a tremendous resource for our friends that are on the spectrum because it tailors the curriculum to um, their specific needs. Um, and in the past, um, those resources have been spread out across a couple different programs, but now it basically houses all of those resources under one program. Makes it a lot easier for the teachers to um, seek out and put together um, a better program at that point. So um, also with that, um, with our continuous uh, improvement here, um, this is gonna be opening up a new program called LLD or Language Learning Disability. And that improves, um, it's improvement <laughs> upon our current services. Um, it's basically another option for individualized services um, that the child study team can use for placements, um, and that'll come online next year. Um, it prov provides um, options along the least restrictive uh, learning environment, um, and that program will all be covered by staff that we already have. Um, so it'll just basically be uh, moving some bodies around and providing uh, an additional service. Uh, we were talking about the uh, elementary summer enrichment program. Uh, Mr. Barbieri said it's a five week program. It's four days a week. Uh, it was held last year. Um, it's math, ELA and STEM focused and it's all hands on activities. It's not a lot of screen time, not sitting there watching videos or being behind a computer, but actually um, doing projects and being interactive. This program is funded by federal grants um, and it's pending final approval at the state level. Um, as a board tonight, we'll be approving the motion for the program, um, but we'll only be able to execute this if the uh, funding, uh, the grant comes through from the state. So more to follow next month. And then lastly, we um, are doing some textbook replacements. This year, um, they did an in-depth review of all the options, the administration, um, and they narrowed it down to a few finalists in each program. Um, although we're not ready to make um, specific recommendations to the board yet, um, they will be doing more thorough analysis um, at the April Education Committee. Um, and the specific things is the elementary ELA program. They're piloting uh, the textbooks there and that's covering ages K through four. Um, basically the teachers have the materials on hand. There's a small group of them. They're running through it. Um, and then they're going to get their feedback to the administration and they'll make a final decision. Um, at the high school, they'll be looking at um, science books, specifically the physics and environmental programs and the marine program, um, the civics course, and then two algebra courses, which is algebra two and bridge to advanced algebra. Um, demonstrations and sample books have already been ordered and have kind of been uh, passed around amongst those teachers. Discussions are happening in their professional learning communities where they're talking about the pros and cons of each. Um, and then they're also gathering feedback so that they can make a, make a recommendation to the board. So more to follow next month on that process. If anybody has any questions in the meantime, you can reach out to myself or Mr. Barbier. Question? Thank you, Mr. Hickey. Uh, governance, we met virtually this month. All items are second reading. So the, um, the, the policies, there's 11 policies and four regulations which we're uh, going to be voted on. We are also voting on the road forward updates, which is just some minor updates uh, to reflect the changes to the mass. Any questions for government? Uh, HST, Health, Safety, and Technology, Mr. Moore. We ended up uh, discussing uh, some of the camera updates, uh, replacement of uh, the old, uh, old system that's an in process. Uh, project uh, as equipment becomes available. Uh, phone update was complete. 
Sonic View message boards or interactive boards uh, complete in the high school, updating the middle school starting uh, this month and other schools will be completed by next year. Uh, lockdown system was complete. Uh, the firewall computer system, uh, addition to the computer system was updated and completed. Uh, just to discuss some of the security uh, um, updates, um, some de-escalation training and inclusive training for the security officers. And just uh, ongoing stuff, but just for next year, proposed security increases in budget costs and staffing levels. Uh, as we all, all know, the for health part, the mask mandate was lifted and uh, buses also. So that's gone forward and I think it's gone well so far. Some new things for discussing for the future, possibly getting uh, cameras for the buses. Uh, we have cameras inside the buses, but um, uh, dash cams for driving for the buses just as a document. Um, violations, we get complaints about uh, people running the stop signs and stuff like that. So uh, something in the future that, that we could look at. Any questions for HST? Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, personnel committee met this month and we discussed new hires and transfers, including a new special ed teacher at Brackman School. And I'd also like to honor re retirees, Denise Benz, who's been a music teacher through the, in the district since 1997. And Mr. Ragusa, who's been a security guard and our security coordinator since 2003. So I wish you guys a happy retirement. Thank you very much for being part of our school district. Uh, next up, I'd like to hear from Dr. Scott Beck from the Citizens Advisory Committee. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien, board. As always, we appreciate the time. My name is Scott Beck. I'm a, uh, from the Citizens Advisory Committee. We are a liaison between the community, the administration, and the board, and the teachers. We meet monthly um, and discuss different topics that uh, we feel are relevant. We met on Monday, uh, March 14th. We discussed three topics this month. We discussed different opportunities for students to earn college credits prior to graduation. We discussed our special education uh, program. Um, that Mr. Hickey uh, touched upon uh, a little bit there. And we also um, discussed some different fundraising opportunities, whether it's viable or not during uh, via transportation. Um, so I'll just do a quick overview. Obviously we get into a lot of things. Um, so our opportunities for students to earn college credit, this was uh, led by district supervisor of Cal uh, guidance counselor, uh, Dr. Perpry and director of curriculum and instruction, Mr. Barberi. Um, our students have opportunities to earn 24 to 30 college credits before they even graduate here. That's our whole freshman year of college, which is just an amazing opportunity. Um, we have a couple of things in place for this. We had our advanced placement courses. These are your courses where um, teachers must be approved um, by college boards. They have to submit syllabuses to college boards. At the end of the year, the students will take an exam. Um, the exams are graded one through five. Um, three, fours, and fives can earn college credits dependent on what schools uh, they tend to go to. Our district will pay for those tests, so it's at no cost to the student at all, which is a great thing. Then we have um, a program called PLAN, Promoting Learners to Achieve Now. This is a collaboration between um, Barnegat High School our district and Ocean County College. This is where the students can earn that 24 to 30 credits from OCC prior to graduation. Um, it works as a dual enrollment, it's, uh, which is our embedded program here. Teachers are considered adjunct professors at OCC. Students have all rights that a student at OCC would have. Um, they can take classes at Southern Ocean County campus or many hubs that we have around there. And this provides great financial gain to our students. Um, the, uh, the plan program uh, will cost anywhere around $3,100, where OCC alone would be out over $5,000. And if we went to any in-state school, the same amount of credits would be upwards of $16,000. So you can see it's a great savings. Um, dual enrollment is another program that Barnegat has uh, in partnership with OCC and also Stockton University. Again, these it's a very strenuous process for the district to get into. Teachers must have a master's degree or higher in the subject matter that they're um, they're teaching. Again, they're considered adjunct professors, and our students have um, all privileges as if they were a student at Stockton or OCC. So we have lots of opportunities for our students to do um, very well before they get out. The district offers several information sessions to our students about these programs. 
And um, something that I didn't know is that they can start as early as ninth grade, as long as they pass certain entrance tests. So we suggested, you know, bringing this to eighth grade parents and students, um, which was something that wasn't done. It was typically high school students. Next, um, we talked about some of our special education. Um, Mr. Gunderson, who's the director of student services, and uh, Dr. Lai was uh, really uh, headed this uh, discussion for us. It wasn't so much about IEPs or 504s or what happens um, to get into the program. It was more of what happens while we're in the program. You know, uh, IEPs are supposed to be very individualized and they tend not to be. It tends to be all action plans put together um, you know, and for each student, it kind of seems to be the same thing. So we are obviously still using all that sort of stuff that we need to, um, but they we're compiling um, binders for each individual student now where they're weekly updated. They're taking all the IEP and, and creating goals and criteria for each student to master their actual assessments. Teachers are helping these students reach their goals. If the teachers are not, then we have instructional coaches, um, to help the teachers. We have supervisors to help the teachers. Um, this individual action plan will help transition from school to school um, as, as they're, tra you know, they're going up through the, um, the ranks of school and, and ages. Um, counselors will look at data every six to eight weeks after meeting their goals. So there's a lot in place. Mr. Hickey touched on a few new programs um, and special education teachers that are being hired. So there's a lot going on to support our students that have um, physical, emotional, mental disability. So we're really in a, in a good place for that. Next, we talked about potential advertising on transportation. Some of you have seen uh, school buses that have advertising on it. Uh, Ms. Vargas from transportation and Mr. Brennan, our business administrator, did a lot of research into this. And basically it comes down to, this is a program that was started in 2011. Um, since then, only about 20 districts have participated in it. The best year was 2015-16. After that, really, the advertising really dropped off to a uh, about $3,400 a year for these districts who are doing it. 50% of that money has to go to fuel costs. Um, as you can imagine, every single dollar that we can save as taxpayers and as a district is great, but there's so much more that goes into it on the back end that you're kind of spending more money to make that money. But this has brought up um, a, a topic that opened their eyes to greater advertising possibilities for the district and uh, something that you know we're going to discuss further and maybe bring in some additional funds to the district to help um, offset some of the costs and give more back to the students and lessen some of the tax burden um, on, on our taxpayers. Um, as always, there was a lot more in our discussion, but this is just a recap. Our next meeting, we're gonna meet on April 11th and we are gonna discuss our summer reading program, different opportunities for the vocational technical schools and uh, the communities that care survey. Anybody have any questions for me? Great, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Beck. I have a motion to adjourn committee of the whole, please. So moved. Second. Uh, Ms. Cherney. Yes. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Mr. Zawicki. Yes. Mr. Arnowski. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Okay, we're adjourned. At I'd like to call the meeting to order for the regular meeting for the Barnegat Board of Education for March 22nd, 2022. The notice of this meeting has been forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Beacon, tap into Barnegat and place in the foyer of each Barnegat Township school in the Barnegat Township Municipal Building and has been filed with the Barnegat Township Municipal Clerk in conjunction with the Open Public Meetings Act. All for the... Ms. Cherney? Here. Mr. Hickey? Here. Mr. Iamonte? Ms. Levy? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Quelch? Here. Mr. Zawicki? Here. Ms. Tarnowski? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Everybody, please rise for flags. <clears throat> Indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay. We have uh, one addition to the agenda tonight. It is on the digital version of the agenda. Um, it is going to be item H and athletics. 
and Barnegat hosts the 38th annual Garden State Classic Wrestling Tournament, December 17th at the Barnegat High School and Middle School. Uh, can I please have a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Ms. Cherney. Yes. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zawicki. Yes. Ms. Tarnowski. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. We have an agenda. <clears throat> okay. Can I please have a motion to approve the regular session minutes from the February 22nd meeting and the executive session minutes from the February 22nd meeting? So moved. moved. Second. Okay. Um, Ms. Cherney. Yes. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zawicki. Yes. Ms. Tarnowski. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. Motion carries. Okay. And uh, now we'd like to hear from our student representative, Ms. Maya Folds. Thank you to everyone for being here and for listening to me. Um, we just held the winter formal a few weeks ago, and it was a success. We made about $700. And student government is currently looking for ways to increase the attendance. The annual senior trip is going to be happening next week for three days. We're going to Bush Gardens in Virginia. And the Bengal Theater Company is holding the spring musical April 7th through 10th. So that's going to be coming up soon. Um, everyone's working hard to produce SpongeBob SquarePants, the musical. And then on the week before spring break, we're going to be having Spirit Week. And to increase student interest, we're actually going to be doing a few new days that we haven't done before, like anything but a backpack day and dress, dress like Adam Sandler day. <laughs> and then spring break is happening. That's the main events coming up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'd like to hear from the Barnegat Education Association liaison, Ms. Sue Mayo. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien, Dr. Latwis, Board of Education members. The association would like to recognize the following companies for donating to our BEA Appreciation Week. Better Way Mortgage, Ricotta Foot and Ankle Surgery, Byers Edge Incorporated, California Casualty, Drexel University Online, EIS Prudential, NEA Member Benefits, NEA Retirement Program, Sun Life Solar, and VM Crystals. Um, we'd like to thank our association president, Mr. Chip Junker, for organizing this event. It was a huge success, and thank you for allowing us to do it on that RPD day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to have, hear from Dr. Latwis for district highlights. All right, I'd like to invite Mrs. Perperi up to the microphone. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I will be doing the upstanders presentation this month. Barnegat is a place where we believe in a positive school climate, family togetherness, and community involvement, and it's the marriage of these three principles that defines our upstander program. To unite Barnegat as a district, we are still utilizing our Bengal Pride acronym, so this month for the letter P, our students have exhibited perseverance. To reward these students, we're granting them with this public recognition and a gift card for a family meal from Mama Rosa's Pizzeria, courtesy of Mama Rosa's to reinforce the idea of a family meal and family togetherness. I'm honored tonight to recognize six upstanding individuals to their commitment to helping make Barney get a better place. So when you hear your name, please join Superintendent Dr. Brian Latwis, Board President Mr. Sean O'Brien by coming to receive your plaque and your gift certificate. First in absentia, a freshman at Barnegat High School, Ms. Anaya Roman. Anaya Roman's character strongly represents perseverance. This year, she has overcome many obstacles, but still manages to stay focused and continue to work hard and succeed. In addition to perseverance, she is dedicated and focused on her goals, and we're glad that she's a part of our Bengal family. Next, we will recognize from Brackman, eighth grader, Alan Wang. Alan is a student who models the trait of perseverance. He is a student who strives to do his best every day in class. He accepts challenges in his assignments and he pushes through them and turns them into a positive learning experience. He is always striving to improve himself as a learner and he often participates in class discussions and loves to read out loud. We are so proud of Alan.
Next, we will recognize fifth grader from Horbelt, Chance Joseph. Chance is unfailingly helpful and always wants to assist others, whether it's the teacher or other students with kind words or deeds, even when he doesn't realize others are listening. Chance is genuinely positive and is the first to congratulate kids when they do something well or succeed in any way, rather than downplaying others' achievements or ideas. His smile is always present, no matter the situation, and he's a great example of his other peers to follow. Congratulations, Chance. And next from Donahue, we'll recognize fourth grader William or Billy Salami. <laughs> Billy is very deserving of the Upstander Award for Perseverance. This school year, Billy has displayed perseverance and tremendous growth in maturity. This is evident through his successes in the classroom and throughout the school day. He greets his peers appropriately when he leaves on the bus and he works very hard to stay focused. We are so proud of Billy. Congratulations, sweetie. Next, we will recognize first, grade, first grader from Collins, Giovanni Felix. Gio Felix deserves the Upstander Award of Perseverance because he comes to school every day with a smile on his face. He is not afraid of hard work and always tries his very best, even when things are difficult. Gio is always willing to help his peers and is an active participant in everything his class does. And it is our honor to nominate him for March's Upstander Award. And last, we recognize pre-K student from Dumphy, Grayson Hughes. Woo. Grayson is a second year pre-K student who will be moving up to kindergarten. He has been working very hard this year to master the skills necessary to have a solid foundation upon advancement. His perseverance has enabled him to work hard at achieving his goals. And just recently, he mastered writing his name freehand, putting on and zippering his coat and packing his backpack independently. Grayson has a newfound sense of independence exhibited by his ability to problem solve in social situations and effectively enter a play group. He's a rule follower and a great role model. Congratulations, Grayson, and congratulations to all of our upstanders. See you next month. <laughs> Next, I'd like to invite up Mrs. Santola to the microphone. Hello, everyone. As a celebration of Youth Art Month, we hope that you were able to view the artwork of our third and fourth graders that's presented in the lobby. If you didn't get a chance, please take a look on your way out. Our young artists are very creative and we have a wonderful art teacher, Mrs. Larson, who was very sorry to not be here tonight, but she's having a baby tomorrow. So <laughs> otherwise she would be here. She created a video of our young artists at work so that you can see how excited they are about all the work that they do. I hope that you enjoy it. Hello, Barnegat families. My name is Tara Larson. I'm the art teacher here at the Joseph T. Donahue Elementary School. I want to welcome you to our classroom as we celebrate Youth Art Month. In our art studio here at Donahue, we explore the elements of art, principles of design, art history, and studio skills. 
Instead of me telling you, I wanted to have the artist show you. Using your imagination for fun. I love art. Art is something you feel a lot more than do because before you think about doing it, you just take out all the things you need to do and you just color and it turns out that you made this giant thing that is awesome. It's amazing! I like art because I can build, create stuff. And I like coloring and drawing and doing all that cool stuff. Creating something new. Art is an explosion full of colors. Art is something that like comes to your mind and even if you make a mistake, you can make that into art too. You can just grab a piece of paper, markers, pencil, whatever you find at home and you can make art by moving, cutting or whatever you can. Art is fun. Art is creation, full of colors and full of imagination, and it is very fun. Art is like an emotion and a feeling you can write down to express yourself in sort of ways. Just on a piece of paper and you can express yourself. So, yeah. Art is something that inspires you to do drawings and coloring and to make you in your imagination. I love art. Art is something you can put on a piece of paper and express yourself in so many different ways because there's so many different bright and dark colors. Art is something that can express your feelings on paper. Oh, you only want. Art is something that inspires people and it makes them like feel like amazed by it. Art can change the world. I love art. Art encourages creativity and imaginative thinking. It helps with problem solving skills and allows for out of the box thinking. Art is a great way for people to express themselves. It is a creative outlet for thoughts as well as emotions. I hope you enjoy looking at all the artwork that our amazing students here at Joseph T. Donahue Elementary School have created this year. Please join us on May 17th for our annual Night of the Arts at the Donahue School, and we will have our first annual um, Festival of the Arts at the high school on June 8th. So I hope to see you all there. Happy
now I have to follow up adorable third and fourth graders. So, but the good thing is tonight, I would like to introduce Matthew Carrera, who's the student in Mr. Peter's class. So Matthew, come on up, my friend. And Matthew is being recognized for his, uh, by Mrs. Williams and Ms. Paulsino for his dedication to his artwork and his friendly demeanor. And so we printed the certificate for him to say thank you for everything you've done. Yeah. And his dragon is actually displayed in the foyer. So please make sure you check out his dragon, but that was wonderful. Okay. Thank you, my friend. Good okay. job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're really proud of you. Yes. If I can, can you speak the microphone, please? Sure. Okay. The real Barnett High School, we did awesome. As always, part of teamwork. Now, my friends, I told them the A103 Bengals. I told Mr. Pierce, he just said, thank you, Ryan DeSantos, for everything. My friends, did always say thank you. I did a war and went to ceramics. I make a dragon did by myself. I help us Ryan DeSantos. He's really good with my friends. We're all of them. And we can help as I did by myself with my friends. I always say thank you a lot, so much. From A103 Bengals, thank you. Go ahead, buddy. So cute. Awesome job, Matthew. So additionally, we have some of the adaptive art classes at our OBMS displayed in the hallway. And if you would please follow at Barnegat Arts on Instagram, you will see some of the amazing artwork created by our students. And as Ms. Larson um, said in her video, on June 8th at 6 p.m., we'll be holding at one Barnegat Music and Arts Festival at the, high, at the high school. And this will highlight performances and art by students in grades three to 12. We're so incredibly proud of the strides that have been made in spite of the pandemic, and I can't wait to showcase the teachers and students in June. And I wanted to say thank you to Ms. Altamori, Ms. Michelo, Ms. Balsino, Ms. Jennings, and Ms. Williams for all you do to promote the arts every day in your classes and through your extracurriculars. Uh, we are hosting a logo contest, and that will be concluding on 331. So if you have any further submissions, please email them to me at mkmarada at barnegatschools.com. And I'm just gonna click through, this is just some of the artwork. So this is already one of the logos uh, that has been submitted, which is really fabulous. This is from Isabella Sadsad, who's a seventh grader. I love that one, but there's still opportunities to submit. Uh, this is some of the artwork too. Today was actually the Teen Arts Festival at OCC. Um, and this was one of the ones that is uh, commended for excellence. Here's another one. And these are all, like I said, on the Instagram page as well. Uh, the teachers have been doing a wonderful job. This was at uh, Teen Arts today as well. Yes. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share with you, it's been really wonderful to see, um, you know, through the pandemic, especially, I think some of the students have used this to express themselves in such a positive light. And so we're really thankful for those teachers and everything they've done. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Uh, Santol, and thank you, Mrs. Camerata, for sharing uh, that presentation tonight. Um, just to piggyback on that, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, uh, really just take a minute to recognize the dedicated and very talented staff that we have here in uh, Barnegat uh, School District, especially in the area of arts. It's uh, one of the many things that I think our district really does very, very well um, at a really, uh, 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 I can't express how, how proud 
we all are of our extremely talented uh, student body. Our students come in, I think we really do a nice job of prioritizing the arts at an early age. I mean, even uh, before third grade, we have students coming in our pre-K program um, and, and to see what some of those students are able to do at that young age and how that grows and continues to get more impressive by the time they get to high school. Um, I really encourage you to take uh, the opportunity to walk around the foyer here and uh, take a look at what some of our students do because it's, it's, it's really impressive um, to say the least. So thank you and kudos to those guys. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to invite up Christina Smith uh, so that we can honor the Seal of Biliteracy winners. Thank you. Good evening. The Seal of Biliteracy is given to students who demonstrate proficiency in two or more languages. Students must score an intermediate mid or advanced in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. This is our fifth year participating in the Seal of Biliteracy. I wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate our world language teachers who have spent numerous hours inspiring and preparing our students for this testing. This year, we had 12 seniors and 11 juniors meet the needed requirements in reading, writing, listening, and speaking for Spanish, French, and Chinese on the Apple assessment. Tonight, I would like to recognize all 23 students on their success. Will the following students please come to the front for your certificates? We'll start with the seniors, uh, Shirley Zhang. <clears throat> Nicole Shavera. Adriana Kapnir. Juliana Can Canizaro. Isabella Ponikowski. Isabel Guiro. Uh, Patria Moreno. Daniel Orr. Gianfranco Barani. Rafi Ferreras, Jose Amanderas, Brittany Martinez. Okay, juniors. <laughs> Skylar Dasty, Maya Gomez. <laughs> Alexa Lengua Serrano, Isabella Lobo. Carlos Salgado Romero. Fernanda Rojas Quintero. Joseph Sanchez Cornier. Tiffany Cando Cobos. Arlette Sosa. Sophia Arizari, <laughs> and then lastly, Carolina Vega Silva.
All right, that concludes my section. And back to you, Mr. O'Brien. <clears throat> I just take like to take a few minutes to talk about um, in New Jersey, several communities have received far less aid than they would than they did in the previous school year. Uh, our neighboring town, Waretown, lost over 30% of their funding this year from the state after other years of reduced aid. Barnegat has been lucky. Uh, we did not lose state aid this year. Uh, it also did not increase all that much based on the current inflation that we're all facing. The district is facing significant headwinds uh, with nearly a 10% increase in benefit costs, uh, increases in SPED and ESL populations, which are outpacing the reporting periods. Uh, but we will continue to make sure that all the funds are used as effectively as possible to continuously improve the schools. Um, tonight we'll be voting on the tentative budget. This is mostly what was, will be presented to the public at our budget hearing. I'd also like to highlight the SpongeBob musical presented by the Bengal Theater Company, which will be at BHS on uh, April 7th through the 10th. And then Beauty and the Beast, which is presented by the Bulldog Theater Company, uh, March 31st through April 2nd at the Brackman Middle School. Please come check out the uh, amazing staff and uh, the students and staff presentation. Um, congratulations again to the Seal of Biliteracy uh, students. That was, that's great work. It's, it's amazing honors. So congratulations. And then um, we'll also be voting on the summer enrichment program this evening. And this was a great opportunity for kids that were struggling next year to get the extra help they need. So uh, please look for more information to come on that. That was all, uh, all I had. Um, I please have a motion to enter public session. So moved. Yes. Ms. Cherney? Um, Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. And Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. With that, I'll read the um, public session. Okay. Anybody that is participating? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, give the proclamation. Great. Uh, the Barnegat Township Board of Education appreciates and welcomes public comment, advice, and suggestions, especially when it is intended to. Sorry. Or just rigged out a little bit. So I'll do my best that. Um, especially when it's intended to assist the Board of Education. Please feel free to speak to the board during public session. Comments and discussion will be limited to one five minute period per individual unless requested by the chairperson and continue on a point of clarification. Public comment at the special meeting of the board shall be related to the call of the meeting. In accordance with the Board of Education policy, each participant must preface. I'm sorry, each participant must be recognized by the presiding officer and must preface their comments by an announcement of their name, address, and group affiliation if appropriate. Your anticipated courtesy to the members of the public. Appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Uh, anybody that's online, if you'd like to speak, please uh, uh, raise your hand in the chat. And is there anybody in the room here that would like to comment? Good evening. Uh, George Fedorczyk, 131 Rock Rimmon Boulevard. Um, Mr. President, you, you just spoke about uh, the budget and state aid. I mean, yeah, we are squeaking by. You see what's going on next door to uh, Waretown and uh, definitely troubling. A um, couple things I just wanted to hit real quick. Um, and I know we can't get into specifics. There's going to be a presentation coming up next month for a special meeting. Um, but if I'm doing my calculation, just kind of want to get it sort of on a record here, we do have an increase in the tax levy, but it's significantly less than the 2021 to the 21-22 uh, budget, if, uh, if I'm doing it correct, roughly about 400,000. 400, so it's a, if, if, if I'm accurate with it, um, you know, that's a, you know, kudos to the, to the administration, to, to Mr. Brennan, to be able, you know, to work that magic. Uh, one of the concerns I do have, uh, that was shown and while it's not broken down completely is there was a decrease in the pre-K funding, um, roughly just under 300,000, roughly about 289. Do we know specifically where that was, why that would be? Um, and I'm just concerned because I, I couldn't find the numbers for the, the year prior to balancing to see if there was a trend at least starting to begin. Um, but it is a concern moving forward since we you know, made a school primarily just for pre-K. Sure. So the, uh, the funding source, uh, one of the things that I can touch upon tonight uh, is that in each of the classrooms, 
we allot a certain amount of seats for special education students that would qualify for pre, uh, free pre-K that would then, um, their program would then be an inclusion type program. So when you report that out, any uh, special education run pre-K program, which has been historically in this district forever, like any other district, uh, that has to be paid out of local, fu uh, local funds. So because we've had such an increase in the special education population in our district over the last couple of years, uh, that hasn't been exclusive to K to 12, that's been in pre-K as well. Um, I wanna say, I think off the top of my head, we had 58 new students, uh, special education students move in um, for pre-K last year alone. So when you factor in the students that would qualify or that their least restrictive environment program would be an inclusion setting, you have to allot that space. So our free our pre-K uh, funding formula hasn't necessarily changed. We still get funded for the amount of students that we have um, in the pre-K setting that are gen ed. Uh, when we applied for that uh, initial funding, we had 360 spots. Um, that 360 number has been reduced by the number of seats that we've had to save essentially for the special education population. So the funding itself hasn't gone down because of any kind of budget cut. Um, each year we have to submit a budget to the state and then we get funded based on that budget. So what we submitted this year uh, had an increase in special education uh, seats available for students uh, that would- that Make, And that's, that's exactly what I'm asking. I wasn't, I didn't think it was a district decision, obviously, you know, it's a grant coming from the state, so they got to figure out the formula. So I appreciate that explanation. Um, again, keep it up. I mean, if we're, if we're, if we're down another almost 400,000, if two more years, we could net zero if we keep going this, uh, this way. So, uh, you know, keep at it. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Ma'am. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Christine Costello. I live at 330 Hawthorne Lane in Barnegat. Um, I've become more involved this year with the strategic planning meeting and showing my face and just trying to um, feel out some of the members of our community and kind of be a voice for some of the teachers in the town. Um, I have two children in the Barnegat Township School District. They've both received a wonderful, amazing education, mentorship from so many caring teachers and staff members and principals and vice principals. Um, so many dedicated coaches with all of the sports that they play. I consider myself very lucky that we have such amazing staff members considering the fact that our pay scale is subpar to surrounding Ocean County school districts. Um, this year in particular, when my son started sophomore year, we all had really high hopes. You know, we're gonna come back strong from COVID, we're gonna close the gap, we're gonna catch up and we're gonna be strong. Um, he's lost three teachers in one year, his sophomore year in high school. His US history teacher left the district for a career change. His chemistry teacher left and went to a surrounding district. His now honors algebra two teacher is leaving and going to a different district. I can't speak for them, but some are leaving for more money and just pulling out, putting feelers out with my friends in the community, many of which are teachers. The morale is low and it's not just because of COVID. I'm a teacher myself in Monmouth County. The micromanaging, please reconsider all this micromanaging, these emails telling them what, when they can leave the building, when they can leave the building, when they can't leave the building, how to do their jobs. If our teachers can close their doors and do their jobs, our kids are succeeding, but they're leaving. And at the high school alone, about 20 staff members, if my information is correct, have left since August. They're not all leaving in droves from public education because of COVID. They're leaving for other reasons too. And I just really wanted to start the conversation through strategic planning, through the community, through the Board of Education, that if we don't change, the schools are not going to grow. They're not going to develop. They're not going to get better. We can't keep having that revolving door of staff members. And I'm just really concerned. My daughter's in sixth grade. You know, I'd say I'd bide my time with my son as a sophomore, but I don't want to bide my time. I want to live in the community and be part of the school system that I'm proud of and that I love. So I just really wanted to bring light to it. I'm not here to point fingers. I'm not here to call people names or be derogatory in any way. I mean, I, I read the Facebook posts. I think it's ridiculous what all of you have to deal with every day. You should not be exposed to that type of criticism and scrutiny, nor should teachers, because sometimes community members will take a teacher's name and put that on Facebook. I'm not here for that. I just really wanna start the dialogue and see what we can do. Because if things don't change, I'm really scared for our school. I'm scared for our community. And I just 
I want to see Barnegat get better. I love this town. I've lived here for 17 years and I'm a proud community member. And I just want to to be here for my children, my friends' children, all the students, and also for the teachers, and just really let teachers get back to teaching. Stop micromanaging and telling them what they have to do every minute of every day. I know we need data for the state. I know we need data for funding. I'm aware of all that. I know we have to test and we need to have data-driven instruction and RTI, but we need to let our teachers do their jobs. Um, you know, I want to thank you for your time, consideration, and um, I'm here. If I can be part of the change, I would be more than happy to be part of the change. Um, reach out to me if we can make a committee, if we can do anything. I don't really know what we can do at this point, but I just hope it's time for a change at this point. Thank you. Yeah, if I can just take a minute to respond to that, I would love to. So, um, I mean, we could have this conversation the entire night. Uh, and I, in all honesty, it is, it's a number of different things that, that lead to that. So I, I totally agree with you in that, in that front. Um, from a staffing perspective, as far as a lot of our staff that are leaving for other opportunities for money or closer to home or things like that, uh, we've, not we at Barnegat, but we as a state have created like a perfect storm in that regard. So three years ago, when I was at my superintendent roundtable in the spring, we had uh, five of the top schools in New Jersey that graduate education majors come and speak to us about a crisis that they had on their hands. On average, we lose about 5,000 teachers a year to, um, in the state to either moving or retirement or any number of reasons, choosing to stay home or changing career path. All those programs collectively graduated 3,500 teachers. So I can tell you that ever since going back, and again, not here pointing fingers, anything like that, but going back to the damage that uh, Christy did with blaming the public education system and blaming teachers, I can tell you as being an administrator during that entire time, we've had less and less applicants apply for positions. And it's not just us, it's everywhere around us. This is a staffing, this is a crisis with teacher shortage that goes across the state. Um, that's, that's certainly not exclusive to us. Uh, we are very concerned about you know, morale and what we can do better. I gotta be honest, I think this is probably one of the best places to work. And maybe I'm biased, but we have a uh, BEA that this entire last week voluntarily ran a teacher appreciation that partnered with administration to do something every day for the teachers to show that they're appreciated. We have done uh, things where every year since I've been here, we've run a superintendent inspire awards where we've had on average 60, 70, 80, 90 staff members get honored every year. We, I think, go above and beyond to try to honor staff if they're a staff member of the year. We go out of our way to honor staff members that go above and beyond, whether it be personal handwritten notes or, or sending things to their, uh, or stopping by their classroom and, and writing handwritten notes, things like that. Um, I can tell you from an administrative perspective from the Board of Education, this is something we take seriously. We just paid $26,000 for a culture and climate survey of our staff so that we could get honest feedback on areas where they think we could do better. Yes, completely anonymous. We actually outsourced with a third party uh, vendor because we wanted to make it anonymous. We have done countless surveys between the BEA and myself where we've asked for feedback from the staff. Um, this is something that I hear a lot um, as far as morale. It's not just specific to here, but if I'm gonna be honest for here, we can hyper-focus on here. So four years ago, I took the helm here. I was a director of special ed prior to that for um, in this district for three years. Um, so I knew what I was getting myself into and into taking this position. When we looked at our education system, we were failing our kids. We were failing our kids. When we talk about your child going through our system, when I remember Mr. Barbieri and myself sitting down before I actually transitioned to this seat, we would watch the trajectory of our students and our students' proficiency numbers went down each year until they graduated. Meaning that the longer your child stayed in our educational system, the worse off they were, right? Now, I will tell you, hand in hand, that I think we have a fantastic group of people here. Um, when you talk about putting your chips in the middle of the table, if I'm being honest, I'm 42 years old and I, and I ascended into this position. I took this position when I was 38. I gave up a tenure track position with job security to take a position like this with contract-based, which means it's performance-based. If I don't perform, I'm not gonna be sitting here, right? I did that as a calculated risk because I believed in the people that were around me here. I would never, ever jeopardize my family's 
of my ability to, to earn for my family and put dinner on my kids' plates at night, right? If I didn't believe in the people that I was going to, going to battle with here. We have a fantastic staff, right? And I hate to see some of them leave. But I'm gonna tell you that sitting in this chair and as an administrative team and as a board of education, you have to make some difficult decisions. So some of those difficult decisions were changing a lot of the things in the culture that we had here. Five years ago, we had no data assessment to figure out where our kids were. We had the state assessment and upper administration would tell everybody to get the state assessment was apples to oranges and wasn't worthwhile. So we didn't find out how our kids were doing and we didn't acknowledge how our kids were doing. So it's very easy to close your door every day and to, to work with your, with your student body when you had no mechanism of feedback. You could go out there and you could do the best that you can, put your, pillow, your head on the pillow at night and you can know that you did the best and that, that was a job well done. We had to change that though. We had to get some form of metrics to find out if our students were doing better. If, we, if I sent it into this position and we were 80% proficiency across the board, we wouldn't have changed the thing. We would have tried to attack the, the problem with a scalpel, not a, not a take an ax to it. But that wasn't the case. Our high school right now is currently in the bottom 25% in the state. Our middle school is in the bottom 10% in the state. I don't know about you, but I don't think that is fair to the taxpayer. And I can tell you that our teachers work hard. Our administration works hard. So when we made some of these unpopular decisions to reconfigure the district or do some of these other things to put supports in place, we now brag about having more support for our staff here than I can tell you in any of the neighboring districts around us. We have, I wanna say last eight master teachers and instructional coaches that are purely their only focus and their only job is to help our teachers, right? Our instructional coaches help them to guide that data. When you look at instruction in a classroom, there's three major components to it. It's your planning phase, your instruction phase, and your assessment phase. Because as I can tell, the number of people in this room have heard me say this a million times before, I can teach my dog to sing, uh, sing the Star Spangled Banner, but it doesn't mean that my little Izzy learned it, right? But I taught it, but it doesn't mean that she learned it. And unless we have a mechanism in place to find out the instruction that's delivered, that our students learn that, that they learned it, that they walked away from that, knowing the material that was covered, then we're letting our staff fly blind. I, which I totally could not agree with more. I, I totally agree with you. And, and, I could, and I could tell you that it's something that from an administrative side of things, we desperately, you know, we want to hold on to our quality staff members, right? And, and I'm well aware of, of the reason why some of them left. And I think some of it was valid with either money, financially reasons, because if you're in education, you know that you only go up a step each year, right? And when we talk about some of the neighboring districts paying more, uh, big kudos, I mean, to the Board of Education and to the BEA, we settled our last contract in one and a half days. And we outpaced the state and the raise for every year that we, that we did. So we're trying to attack this from every possible angle that we can. County average, yeah. So we, we have gone out of our way to try to attack this. And the last thing I'm gonna say, cause like I said, we could do this all night um, and, and not in the kind of, I'm not being adversarial. I think this is a great dialogue. I really do. Um, when we talk about the number of assessments I've heard people say micromanaging the number of assessments. We put out an assessment manual about four years ago that outlined as a support to teachers what a good assessment was, what a quality assessment was, and then we set parameters for the grade book for what we were looking for. And that was three majors and seven minors, Mr. Barbieri? Six minors, seven minors? Seven minors. So that's 10 assessments in a, an average marking period is 45 days. So seven minor assessments could be as quick as an exit ticket, could be a five minute quiz, could be, it's minor. It's a minor assessment. The major assessments, should probably take a half a block for our high school folks, right? So I hear a lot that we overassess when we look at that and we micromanage because we want that. But what we're trying to do is really change the culture here of where we didn't assess and we didn't ask for that feedback and we didn't look to see if our students really learned what we were putting out there. So I understand that some people, it's still kind of like a, a growing pains, if you will. But when I hear people say, well, we assess 10 of the 45 days, that's a little misleading, I think. So I totally agree with you. I think we definitely share that same concern. Hence, like I said, a couple months ago, the board approved the $26,000 culture and climate um, survey. But 
you know, I, I, I do think we are trying to attack this from every angle that we possibly can to maintain our quality staff members. Absolutely. No, no, please. I think that was great. And I really appreciate you bringing that forward. And I, I would like to comment on the survey a little bit. The survey is um, intended, you know, the Board of Education discussed it. We discussed it with the administration. Uh, we had a similar survey at the company I work for, and it completely changed the culture of our organization. Uh, so as a manager of people in, in my company now, I have specific goals tied to the survey results. And, and that's the expected outcome of this survey is to understand how the staff feels about the direction they receive. Is it clear? Is it meaningful? So that the administration can develop action plans to address, it, it allows them to focus on what the problems are because these, that's what these survey companies do. They, they look at this information across thousands of different metrics and they, they can take these you know, disparate kind of communications and, and filter them up to, this is what this means. And the output of that will be an action plan that helps the, the administration address those challenges the staff are facing that are that are a little more nebulous than you know how hectic the day is right so it, it'll it'll allow them to specifically focus what is needed and what what can be done to help drive some change in the organization anybody else in the room have any more questions mr junker Uh, William Junker, I'm the president of the Barney Education Association. Um, wow, I had I had something real quick I wanted to say, and I want to touch on some things that were asked and said. First and foremost, I want to thank Dr. Latwis and the administration for helping the BEA set up that whole week, especially the Monday um, coming in um, and the member benefits fair. I, I hope that everyone, administrators included, um, saw how hard we worked to make it an awesome day and an awesome week. Um, and like, that's what we've been doing here for a while is, is trying to make sure everyone is well aware, like, Hey, we really do care. And there's a lot of really cool things in place. Um, we had a lot of vendors come out and they actually, uh, donated food and things like that. They also help out with our hall of fame. So I want to shout out to this, um, you know, Steve, Steve Nickel and Dr. Latwis worked really hard with me to plan it out. Our next event is going to be June 1st and it's going to be here at the high school and we're inviting everyone to come and, um, you know, be there for our hall of fame. I don't know if everyone knows we do have a Barnegat schools hall of fame that the board and I worked hard on um, having that piece, that it's a long-term thing, um, that we're recognizing our staff that have been here and have worked hard for a long time. Me being a Barnegat kid, understanding how hard, just like Ms. Selfridge and Ms. Cucinata worked for me. Um, so June 1st is gonna be that, and it's gonna pair with Dr. Lapis <coughs> Inspires Awards. We're gonna invite all our retirees back. Um, Dr. Donahue is gonna be here, and Dr. Horbell have, or said they're gonna be coming back because we're gonna dedicate their plaques for their buildings that they're named after here in Barnegat Schools. Um, so. You know, um, Steve worked really hard and got our high top tables and we got a good look at what it's going to look like for that event. Um, and, and really, since our COVID numbers are low, we can actually kind of do it again and have everyone. Um, and that's really been since um, Mr. Sarno was at the board level um, was really our vision is like have everyone come back for a people of the year event um, to show that, hey, listen, we matter in Barnegat. We all matter. We work really hard. Um, and I see George Fedorsik nodding because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Ms. Selford, she was our teacher in third grade. Um, so and I, I'd like to just talk about some comments. Um, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I, I'm, I'm going to certainly encourage everyone to go online. And, and uh, there's, there's just something in New Jersey called ED. Um, and I'm going to get it wrong because there's, there's a lot of acronyms out there, but it's ED TPA. And Dr. Latwis talked about a perfect storm in New Jersey. This is one of the perfect storms in New Jersey. And we're, as you know, as an NGA leader and, and our BA leader, I, I want us to have the best educators in New Jersey. But this piece has really been, has really been like part of that perfect storm and stopping educators from coming out. And, and you know, getting, getting more people, because um, we are seeing less and less. Um, and because of that, that perfect storm that Dr. Labus is about, and I don't want to speak to anybody in particular, because again, I have, I have intimate relationships with a lot of our staff members here. Um, but like, it's really created why staff members can leave. A person like me in 21 years really couldn't go anywhere at this point in my career because they couldn't pay me to go somewhere. Right now, I could leave Barnegat schools and take a job somewhere else, making a little bit more money because the district doesn't have another teacher of the handicap certification person applying. Um, and that is really happening in our schools. Um, and, and again, it's, it's about like, hey, I, I can move somewhere else. Um, and I know the arguments back and forth, like maybe they wouldn't be looking if they didn't feel this and that. Um, but like, again, um, there is that storm that's been created. And I urge everyone to go on and, and take action against this, this, this ed TPA thing. And I saw Mr. Barbieri nodding because it is very difficult um, for a teacher to go through go through the program, and then it's an arduous process after. Um, and it's, it's really thwarting a lot of our best people from coming out. 
and, and really it did start with Chris Christie attacking the healthcare costs and, you know, adding these things to the, um, to the, to the plate of like, I don't want to be a teacher. Like, it's not worth it to me. I can go do something else and, and, and make the same money, if not more, and not owe a house, right? And that's really what's happening right now. Um, but I, I like what you were saying about that. I, I actually want to talk to you on the side about possibly running for the school board because I want to get more members like you involved because you're an NJA member. And, and you're saying, hey, I want to get involved. That's the best sure. way to get involved is to run for the school board and sit there with these folks and do that hard work because it is a lot of hard work. <laughs> Um, and I want to speak to our settlement as well, because, you know, talk about salary. Um, you know, we're, we're right at the cusp when we finish in 2024 of getting that $60,000 a year starting salary. Um, I know as the, edu as the as the negotiator, negotiator for us, I worked really hard to make sure our salary guides were in that spot. We did settle very quickly this year. Kudos to that was the first time in, I believe, five or six negotiations that we settled before. And all of our members got paid, you know, got, got their raises right away. Um, and we are still, as we speak, at a plus um, county average settlement. We had a three five three five and a three two, right, Mr. Redden? I'm correct with that. Sure. Yes, um, and that's still that's still that's still better than county average, right? Um, and you know, I believe it's three point three one or three two nine, but the changes because settlements come in, we have a couple of local settling. Um, but again, that money is it's difficult when you talk about that number because then you have to go back and build that salary guide. And I know for me, I sat there and and pained over. Making building that salary guide back so that way two things because when I sat the first time here in this round we did have a problem and it wasn't it wasn't as hyper focused now as it was it wasn't as hyper focused then as it is now um, I'll finish up quick um, literally we did have staff members leaving at that time but it, it wasn't so obvious then because it wasn't staff members that were higher on the salary guide it was people in the five and six year range um, but I sat at that table with Scott Sarno and nobody else was there and I said we've got to make sure we retain our teachers important we're losing good people we're spending a lot of money to train them and they're leaving and listen that has been discussions that i've had with dr latwis too about like hey we got to do more we got to do more um but I, I'll, I'll be honest i am proud of the settlement that we put on that table i would never have in good faith gone to my membership with any settlement and frankly i think it was something like 355 to eight we had eight people vote no for that settlement like that's how good it was to my membership um and <laughs> i'll stand by that to, to, to my dying breath as we worked so hard in that settlement and, and frankly, we're working right now already for the 2024 round of negotiations to make sure that we can retain teachers here. So I'm sorry I went over, but I want to thank you guys again. We worked so hard for that week, and, and, and really it, it was apparent with our administrators, Dr. Latwis and Steve Nickel, um, to really make that happen. And I can't thank you guys. And it wasn't Sarno. No. Mr. Sarno was the board president when I negotiated the first contract. Oh, the first one. Yes, absolutely. And they were talking was, about this past and year. That was, no, no, no. And that was the problem with the first round is that we were struggling to retain teachers. And I said that at that round as well. Like we are struggling to retain teachers here. And that really hasn't changed, but we're trying really hard. But yes, you were the second round negotiator. Yeah, that was the good contract. You're the one that got done quickly. All right, I just the other guy. I, I was proud of that one. <laughs> uh, is there anybody else in the room would like to speak? Anybody online like to speak? I have a motion to adjourn public session, please. So moved. Second. Um, Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. And Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Public session is closed at uh, 7. Uh, item number 13 is uh, finance B and G committee motions. Can I please have a motion for items one through 13? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on those items? None. Uh, Ms. Journey? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Ms. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Motion's carrying. Uh, next up is athletics committee motions. Can I please have a motion for item number one? Raise your H. So moved. Second. Any uh, further discussion on? Athletics? Yeah, I'd just like to take a quick second to uh, recognize the athletics department um, for pushing so hard to continue to showcase our district and our amazing facilities. 
um, you know, this edition of the 38th annual Garden State Classic Wrestling Tournament is huge for us. And so thank you to uh, Mr. Sawicki and, and Mr. Germano for uh, pushing so hard to continue to showcase this district and our everything we have to offer. Anything further? All right, with that, uh, Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motions carry. Next up is education committee motions. Can I please have a motion for items one through seven? So moved. Second. Okay. Any uh, discussion on those items? All right, Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motions carry. Okay. Next one is for information purposes only for out of district workshops. Item number 17, governance committee motions. Can I please have a motion for items one through four? So moved. Any uh, further discussion on governance? Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Motions carry. Okay. Uh, next section is personnel. Can I please have a motion for items one through 23? So moved. Second. Any uh, further discussion on our personnel? Ms. Journey? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Motions carry. Uh, next up, can I please have a motion to enter executive session? So moved. Second. Second. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zwicky? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, we're in executive session at 723. Okay, everybody online, we will be back. Turn executive session, please. So moved. Second. 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 Yes. 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 We need a motion for items number one and two in new business. Mr. Brennan, would you please uh, number two? Yes. 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 Eighty eight. 
Oh, you're good. Yes. 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 Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Yes. 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 Yes.